Well, James Earl Jones has passed away. He appeared in projects ranging as widely from Conan to Driving Miss Daisy to Command and Conquer. He was a really accomplished on-screen actor, on-stage actor, and voice actor. In fact, ironically, his most famous roles may have been as a voice actor, providing the voice for Darth Vader in Star Wars and Mufasa in The Lion King. But I'm not here to talk about his career as an actor, because there are other people who are better suited to bring you that perspective. I'm just here to remember the man because I found his work very inspiring. Darth Vader was one of the first people who inspired me to mimic voices. While I would eventually try and mimic Arnie, Patrick Stewart, Ian McKellen, and a lot of other actors who did really memorable parts and really memorable lines, for me, it started with Darth Vader. And it was also, ironically enough, his performance as Mufasa that opened the eyes of a very young child to the fact that an actor could portray multiple roles. They could be more than one person, and they could present very different sides of themselves just through the way they spoke. It was eye-opening to a person who didn't really understand that there was an art form to bringing these stories to the screen yet. To make a confession, I have never been very deeply invested in movies. I'm not familiar with a lot of the parts that James Earl Jones has played. Yet, I still feel like he has turned up in a lot of places that really surprised me. One of the strangest was his appearance in a small film called What the Deaf Man Heard, where he played the part of a, something of a con man and moonshiner who also happened to be one of the most wealthy men in the county. It was a fascinating part, and Jones approached it with a, a zest and a very real sense of, of joy and passion that made a big impression on me. Again, I first saw this when I was 12 or 13. I didn't really have a sense for what good acting technique was or what good storytelling technique was. I was just starting to put these ideas together. But seeing this actor who I knew primarily by his voice and for playing the roles of very powerful and commanding characters to transform into this very different kind of character again made an impression. But more than that, I began to develop a sense that he was a man who just enjoyed his craft. Part of that was the zest and vigor he brought to his roles on screen, but he is also an actor and, you know, they get paid a lot to do that. So maybe it's easy to bring a certain level of enthusiasm to the role. But what really convinced me that James Earl Jones did what he did because he loved it was when he appeared on Late Night with David Letterman and he performed the top 10 things that sound cool when said by James Earl Jones. A really funny bit that he delivered perfectly and yeah, was kind of poking a little fun at him, but also was rooted in the deep admiration a lot of people have for that melodious speaking voice he's got. I could be wrong. Maybe James Earl Jones hated every role he played. But he sold me not just on the roles he played, but on his enjoyment of performing art. Now, decades after I first heard his voice, I do my part to create enjoyable stories for other people by writing and by acting. And I hope I do it with the joy and the seriousness of James Earl Jones, one of the first people to inspire me down this path. There are a lot of people out there who have been given hours and hours of entertainment and enjoyment watching the performances of James Earl Jones. I am certainly not the least among them, and I'm very grateful for what I got out of his performances. But more than that, I'm very grateful that his joy and passion for the craft showed through in everything he did, because it's part of what pushed me to invest some small part of my life also pursuing that craft. Thank you, James. Your life was an inspiration in more ways than you know.